Now, Raila Odinga himself did not lose much uh, as a person from the loss, but Kenya, Kenya lost so much. Yeah. Raila Odinga is without a doubt the best president Kenya never had. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is my hope and prayer that this video is actually going to find you guys in good health. Personally, I'm fine. Kisumu is fantastic. Maybe you could let me know where you are watching the video from. Saitabau Ole Kanchori, Raila Odinga's chief agent during the last general election, yesterday gave his own account on why Raila Odinga lost the election during an interview on NTV. I want us to do a critical analysis of that interview because I paid very close attention to what Ole Kanchori was saying. Ole Kanchori is insisting that Raila Odinga lost that election because of three individuals. The first individual he's accusing is Junet Mohammed because according to him, Junet Mohammed was everything in that particular campaign. He's also accusing the second person, who is Joe Musheru, the cabinet, the former cabinet secretary for ICT. And lastly, he's also accusing Professor Makau Mutua. For me, I will not agree with him fully on those three individuals. For example, what role was uh, Professor Makau Mutua playing around Raila? Professor Makau Mutua was just there for the photos, nothing else. What about uh, Junet Mohammed? Junet Mohammed was very close with Raila Odinga. He's still very close with Raila Odinga. And as expected, he was going to carry the burden if this election was going to be lost. If the elections was going to be won, Junet Mohammed was also going to carry the pride. So for that was expected. What about the cabinet secretary for ICT? What role was he supposed to play? And Babu Wino, for me, during the same same interview, Babu Wino for me is the person who really understood why we failed in this election. Central. Do you know the reason why agents withdrew from their work in Central? They were agents. But they were agents were told that they were going to be paid in batches. In, at different times, in different proportions. In the morning, they were supposed to be sent money. In the afternoon, being sent money. At the time of counting, being sent money. But in the morning, intentionally, money was not being sent. What do you do as an agent? You say that these people have duped you. They were agents. But these agents were not paid. But the person who was paying these agents, I will not name the name. But I know, we all know, it's not even from our side. The person who was supposed to pay the agents was from Uhuru's side. You see? And this person intentionally refused to pay these agents. Intentionally. Then agents decided to withdraw because we are not being paid. We were hired to work. We are not being paid. Many places, especially in Mount Kenya, our agents, the few, the, some of the areas where we had agents, they were given money at 6 a.m. and told, you guys, we have, you have been paid for the day. You can go home. And they went home. And and, by the competitors, yes, by the agents for the competitors, and in some cases by presiding officers. We have evidence. Of course, to some extent, Jeremiah Kioni also had very valid points. But for me, Kanchori himself was one of the reasons why we failed in the last election. We went wrong the minute we dismantled some of those uh, structures. Because the campaign board was supposed to run practically everything. But then, you know, at some point, the campaign board was, was slowly dismantled uh, by individuals who wanted to, um, who had their own agenda, let me put it that way. And then it became a, a more individualized, uh, you know, an individualized structure, a structure that depended primarily now on individuals as opposed to a group of people. So I want us to try and figure out personally what I think went wrong in that campaign. Before we do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button, so that next time we produce a video like this, 
YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support because without the support, this channel cannot be where it is now. Let me play for you a bit of uh, the interview, Ole Kanchori. We could not have lost this election if it wasn't for three people. Three. The first one is Junet Mohammed. The second one is Joe Musheru. And the third one is Professor Makao Mutua. And I'll tell you their roles. And these are people I, I have worked with and are, they are people I respect. But in terms of responsibility, they take the highest responsibility. Junet Mohammed, because Junet Mohammed is a one man who purported to know everything. And he, you know, he nullified everything everyone else said. He also ensured that he kept the people who could have helped Baba, you know, at arm's length, at, at arm's length. He ensured that nobody came close to Baba who would have helped him because he wanted to be the alpha and the omega of the campaigns and of the agents management system. And um, Joe Musheru, because Joe Musheru was a saboteur. Joe Musheru had no other mission other than to sabotage the agents management system. He had no other agenda. He had no other mission. He came in to sabotage the agents, our agents management system. And he succeeded. And I'll tell you how he succeeded. You know, he ensured that everybody who had a role, including, you know, basic things like the people who were printing the letters that I signed, were his people. The people who were bringing in, were typing the names, were his people. And they were under instructions not to deliver. And they ensured that they did not deliver. You know, very simple things like letters get, just getting to agents in time. Letters which I signed and which were taken away from the signatory myself. And they were controlled by Joe Musheru's people. And Joe Musheru ensured that the letters did not arrive on time. Uh, of course, Junaid Muhammad had his role also in the agents, uh, in the mess, because these are people who did not listen to anything that anybody had, else had to say. They knew everything. They were know-it-alls. You know? Then, of course, we had uh, this pleasant man called uh, Makao Mutua, Professor Makao Mutua, an, an exceptionally likable man, an exceptionally affable chap. You know, you would never want to hang out with a better guy, you know, with anybody else. I think if I was having a drink, uh, I would never want to have a drink with anybody other than Professor Makao Mutua. A likable guy, you'd never quarrel with him. But the day that uh, Musheru, uh, Junet, and others came and said that he's, you know, Makao Mutua will be in charge of the command center, is the day that everything else, everything went south. Also, pay very close attention to what Babuino is trying to say here. People are fighting Junet for no reason. I can tell you for tr the truth of this thing, of this matter. Do you think the money that was meant for the agents, do you think that money was commensurate to what, to what Junet would have been in Baba's government? Do you think Junet would have left this election just to go so that he forgoes his dream in Baba's government? Probably he could have even made more money in Baba's government than that money for the agents. But there is always somebody who must always carry the cross. That is why that, is why that cross was put on Junet's back. Ya mwisho, ni kuambia Junet. Mwishimu wa Raila Odinga is a leader in this nation. Sisi wengine ni wafuasi wa William Ruto Suma. But I want to tell the right honorable Prime Minister, your loss, 50% will be occasioned by Junet. 50% of the loss of your votes in Akam will be occasioned by one Junet Mohammed. He is not adding value to your team. He is busy just antagonizing everybody. We also know that even the wrangles within ODM, Junet Mohammed, where we put a Sakura, don't look far. Angalia tuyo muto na simama karibu na wewe, huyo ndia nakuletea asara. Kwa hivyo mimi sita kusema kusi. Now, for me, if you ask me, Raila Odinga actually lost the election because of several factors. And some of those factors may not be attributed to the three individuals. 
if they were to be attributed to the three individuals, then they were also to be attributed to several other individuals. I know when blame games were to be the order of the day, personally, I have my own opinion on what transpired. For example, on this particular channel, there is a gentleman who was very close with uh, Kenya Kwanzaa. He would always accuse me of making videos which are normally scripted from the secretariat that I used to get instructions from uh, from Francis Atuli, sometimes from uh, Murade, sometimes from Toju, you know, he used to accuse me. Well, in real sense, I never had in this particular election direct link or contact with the secretariat. Of course, it was my choice. I never wanted to be really involved in this particular campaign. But I used to get a lot of information on what was going on. And on this channel, and that's probably why the guy was accusing me, on this particular channel, I used to point out the weaknesses which were open in the campaign. So Raila Odinga, for me, lost this election because of three reasons. I mean, of uh, six reasons. Number one is that the campaign underestimated William Samoy Araputo. You know, after the handshake, Raila Odinga and his team felt that they finally got whatever they, they've always lacked, which was the deep state and the system. Because when it comes to numbers, Raila Odinga has the numbers. Even in this election alone, Raila Odinga had the numbers. He got 6.9 million votes. The only thing which Raila Odinga has always lacked, in quote, has always been the deep state. So they underrated the determination of William Ruto to win the presidency. This presidency, according to Ruto, was a matter of life and death. So he was either going to win it, and if he could win it, then William Ruto was going to die. That's how he took this campaign. So William Ruto strategized all aspects. When it's come to money, William Ruto was spending his money, buying people here, there. Here, there. When it comes to strategy, William Ruto had the strategy. He knew what he wanted. When it comes to messaging, William Ruto had a clear messaging. When it comes to perception, William Ruto created the perception that, you know, like for example, when uh, the, the results were finally out and uh, Raila had the 6.9, Ruto had the 7.1. You know, I ask myself, really? Because William Ruto made it appear as if, for example, Western Kenya had already taken. So he invested in perception. While William Ruto was doing this, Raila Odinga and his team were underwriting him. That they had succeeded in isolating William Ruto or Mudavadi, blah, blah. Then, boom, William Ruto reached out to Mudavadi and Weta. That's where this election was lost. Because even if William Ruto were to create a perception, as long as Weta was going to lock Western, as long as Mudavadi was going to lock Vega, there was no way he was going to get those votes. So they underrated Ruto. Number two, and this is the main reason why Raila Odinga lost, and there's still a debate whether Raila Odinga lost. Of course, in politics, there's only one winner. How you win it is none of anybody's business. So William Ruto won. IEBC. IEBC is why Raila Odinga lost this election. You know, William Ruto took charge of IEBC. And that's why Babu Wino still believes very strongly, and so many people on this channel, that Uhuru actually played Raila. Why was Raila Odinga accepting to go to this election with Wafula Chebukati as the chairman? Why was he allowing that to happen? Raila Odinga ought not to have gone into this election with Wafulache Bukati. And how is that important? That's important because we all saw how out of 42 counties, Wafulache Bukati appointed 19 Kalenjins as the retiring officers at the county levels. 19 out of 42 from the Kalenjin nation. How would that even be allowed to happen? So this is how they ended up frustrating certain sections of the Republic. Like when William Ruto realized that Ukambani was drifting toward Azimio, 
there's a way he suppressed the turnout in those areas. That's how he ended up, for example, places like Coast, you know, places like Western Kenya. There are areas where his team really sabotaged this team people sabotaged the election. So the truth is, the fact that Raila Odinga failed to reform IBC, because after the 2007 election, after the 2013 election, after the 2017 election, Raila Odinga ought to have focused more on electoral reforms. But because he underrated Ruto, because he thought he had the system, he thought that IBC will now then just play balls. So IBC is what let Raila Odinga down. Number three is the deep state, overrated deep state. And which makes the question, who is deep state and who are they working for? Deep state really undermined Raila Amolodinga. And I want to try and exonerate the cabinet secretary for ICT, Joe Mosheru. Now, Joe Mosheru is a technocrat. He has never been a politician. How then do you entrust election on him? What role was Joe Mosheru supposed to play in the election? Kanchori is accusing him of uh, misleading people during the agent. Who was the chief agent? The chief agent was none other than Kanchori. He ought, if he knew these things were happening, to have raised them. He ought to have resigned. Because saying that Joe Mushiro ensured that all the people who are printing the names of the agents, you know, Kanchori should tell ODM supporters, should tell Azimio supporters that he created a team. For example, in Kisumu here, Kanchori should tell Raila Odinga supporters that in Nyakach, for example, my constituency, where I come from, this was his person. And this person had this team. And these people never got the letters. You know, so it simply means that Deep State failed. Why do you think Deep State failed? Because Raila Odinga and the team trusted the Deep State. But for me, I have a different idea, if you ask me. And I know where this election was lost. There was a time Raila Odinga named some partial cabinet. He named Peter Munya, Minister for Agriculture, Hassan Joho, Minister for Lands, Oparanya, Minister for Finance. Who else? Were they three or four? I think there were four individuals or three. That's when the deep state started sabotaging Raila Odinga. Because someone like uh, Fred Matiangi, who was the Minister for Interior, was left out. So, as a human being, you would ask himself, why are these guys leaving me out. So it means I'm not in the picture. So they'll start playing some games or maybe just take a low profile. So they deep state. Number four, messaging. And I used to talk about messaging severally. You know, messaging is very easy. You just identify an issue, you campaign it with it. You run away with it. Ruto identified the hustler narrative. He ran away with it. Raila Odinga ought to have identified an issue so that when someone comes and asks you about Raila Odinga's campaign, you will tell him that the campaign is actually premised on this, this, and this. In the last election, you could really not understand what Raila Odinga's campaign was based on. I was asked those questions and I was told that Raila Odinga's campaign is tailor to regions. But beyond regions, there's the nas national rallying call. So the messaging was really wanting. Up to now, I don't know who was in charge of Raila Odinga's uh, social media campaign. Why? Do you think I don't know? Up to now, I don't know who was in charge of Raila Odinga's social media campaign. And you know, for example, this channel ha has a lot of following, which if, for example, was used well, could have succeeded in a way because up to now there is there are people who believe that uh, i was giving i used the channel to give them hope you know there are those who are on the other side who believe that this channel was campaigning for Ayla. so it means the channel had an impact but if a channel like mine which had serious impact 
and it's not anything if you go by numbers politically speaking lima queen's channel is the biggest in the country so far in terms of political analysis and we have a reloading campaign and you know they are not even reaching out i spoke to manyora for example and he also told me that you know people used to accuse him while he never had any the, the secretary never bothered but i'm learning that there are certain websites i mean there are certain youtube channels with around 50 people who were being facilitated heavily by the secretariat to pass out some information so it means the messaging lacked number 5 is infiltration reloading's camp was highly infiltrated there were people who were sympathetic and people who were working with William Ruto for William Ruto i know for sure and it has happened before i don't know why Raila Odinga never learned all this there were people whose main objectives in this campaign was to sabotage the other day i listened to Winnie Odinga speaking and she was very clear that basically there were people who infiltrated that campaign and lastly okay in the issue of infiltration someone was telling me that Raila Odinga would hold those highly sensitive meetings with some people the moment he would step out of those meeting the other camp would be informed already so they were infiltrated and lastly the issue of agents i don't know what to say about agents but there is no way you can win election without agents if there's one thing which Raila Odinga needed to invest in only one thing instead of going for those rallies Raila Odinga just needed to have agents he just needed to identify agents and identifying agents was very easy and probably that's where unit is being crucified kanchori is saying that the agents were from jubilee and that unit mohammed collapsed the odm network i've always opined on this channel that for elu dinga to succeed odm as a party must be strong odm as a party has structures starting right from the grassroots not even grassroots if you take odm structure it begins at the polling station across the country so there are officials i don't understand why Raila Odinga was going away or out of ODM party to go and identify agents and then these agents were going to be filtered by people who were already working for Ruto you know when you talk of infiltration you are saying okay these people are infiltrated we have agents and they are infiltrated that they must be vetted you know someone told me that because i once asked some people why we were not involved in the campaign someone was telling me that the main reason why we were not involved in the campaign was because of the fact that some of us were viewed like having uh, been given money by Ruto that sometimes we would talk things which were not pleasing to them you know i don't know what to think but for me this campaign was actually messed up big time by the candidate himself Raila Odinga ought to have learned his lessons Thank you guys and may you have a good day. Bye bye.